Hello, I'm Harrison McLeod. Uh, I'm the rector of Christ Church uh, in Greenville, South Carolina. I'd like to welcome you to this offering of the Rector's Forum. Uh, today we'll be talking about Matthew uh, chapter 12, uh, but before we do that, um, I, I want to uh, wish you all a happy Easter, uh, since we haven't actually had a, a Rector's Forum since just before Easter, uh, but we're picking back up now, so I hope uh, you've had a wonderful beginning to the Easter season. Uh, so let me begin us with a word of prayer and then we'll turn our attention towards Matthew's Gospel. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery has established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. All right, so today we're going to be looking at um, Matthew 12, uh, and it's, um, I think, a, a fascinating chapter and really instructive for us um, on, on several different levels. Uh, and, I, and I want to begin by uh, reading just the first eight verses of Matthew's uh, gospel in chapter 12. Uh, so Matthew writes, uh, At the time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, his disciples were hungry, and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, Look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. He said to them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungry, and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, which it was not lawful for them to eat, nor for those who were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? I tell you something greater than the temple is here. And if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, you would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. So here we have an instance of, of Jesus and his disciples. Uh, they are... Uh, wandering through the countryside, they're, they're hungry, and so they begin to pluck uh, grains of wheat and they eat. Uh, and as they pluck those grains of wheat, they, they violate the Sabbath. The Pharisees find out about this and they challenge Jesus uh, and his disciples, um, telling them that they've broken the law. Um, and, and Jesus, as Jesus always does, has an answer for that. Uh, but it's important that we go back and, and sort of revisit um, how this uh, comes about. So if we if we look at Exodus um, chapter twenty, um, beginning really in the at the, at the first verse, uh, we have God delivering the Ten Commandments to the people. Uh, and here at the beginning of verse eight, so we're in Exodus twenty verse eight, it says, "Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work." But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. In it you shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter, your manservant or your maid, or your cattle or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So that's the prohibition against doing any work on the Sabbath. And, and obviously, picking grain is doing work. And so uh, the Pharisees accuse uh, Jesus' and his disciples of violating the Sabbath. Um, Jesus comes back to them, uh, and he, he, he retorts. Uh, and he refers to a, an episode out of 1 Samuel. Uh, it's actually 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, uh, where, where David um, and some of his, his men go into the temple uh, and they eat, um, they eat the bread in the temple, and not just the bread in the temple, but, but the bread that's been consecrated. So for us Episcopalians, you can imagine um, um, a group of people who happen to be 
uh, heading through our churchyard one day. They, they feel like they're hungry, so they just let themselves into the church, and they go up to the ombre where we keep the consecrated uh, bread, uh, and they, they just eat it. Um, it, it might uh, offend our sensibilities somewhat, um, uh, but, but they would say, you know, they were hungry, and that was the only food available, and so they, they ate it. Uh, so Jesus says, if, if David can do this, if David uh, can eat the bread of the presence um, and, and, and God doesn't sort of punish him for that, uh, then certainly uh, Jesus and his disciples can eat uh, grain that they've just harvested uh, without um, any, any um, consequences. Uh, the other argument that he gives, uh, or that Jesus gives, um, uh, in verse 5, he says, Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are guiltless? Uh, so we know that uh, if you look at, in Leviticus, uh, you can see that on the Sabbath the, the priests themselves prepare loaves of bread and they, they, they line them up and they, they sacrifice half of the loaves of bread and, and the other half they consume themselves. So on the Sabbath, the priests are given dispensation so that they can actually perform work. Uh, so on the one hand, we have an Old Testament story where uh, David um, eats the bread of the presence and is, and is held guiltless. And also the, the priests, um, the, Le the Levitical priests in the temple also have a pass on the Sabbath and are allowed to do some work. Uh, so, so Jesus um, really argues against him and then he he sums up his argument uh, by saying, if you had known what this means, I desire mercy and not sacrifice, uh, you would not have condemned the guiltless, for the Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. In, in that last um, uh, little verse there, he's, um, he's quoting Hosea, um, and he's quoting Hosea 6.6, 6, which you'll recognize uh, as I read it. Hosea writes, uh, this is God speaking. Uh, For I desire steadfast love and not sacrifice, the knowledge of God rather than burnt offerings. So, so Jesus concludes his argument against the Pharisees by saying, um, if you had known what that meant, um, you wouldn't have questioned it anyway. God isn't looking for a, a grain offering or a, a sin offering. Uh, what God is looking for is the offering of a, of a human heart um, in spirit. Um, a, a broken and contrite heart might be words that we would use, or a, a changed heart that embraces God's love and forgiveness and, and receives that gift. And, and so Jesus fairly effectively um, talks about what it means to um, live more faithfully into the Sabbath and, and what's allowed and what's prohibited. Uh, and he, he calls uh, all those around him to live into the spirit of the law rather than the letter of the law. Uh, to properly observe the Sabbath. Uh, and then we see, uh, beginning in verse 9, uh, Jesus heals someone. So, uh, if we read here, it says, And uh, Jesus went on from there and entered the synagogue. And behold, there was a man with a withered hand. And he asked him, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath? So they might accuse him. And he said to them, What man of you if has one sheep and it falls into a pit on the Sabbath, will not lay hold of it and lift it out. Of how much more value is a man than a sheep? So it is lawful to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And the man stretched it out. And he was restored, whole, like the other. But the Pharisees went out and took counsel against him how to destroy him. So in this little episode, if, if we're wondering what does it look like to observe the Sabbath, uh, Jesus demonstrates that pretty clearly. Here's a man with a withered hand, uh, and he asks the Pharisees, is it, is it lawful to do this kind of work on the Sabbath? Um, and and that's, he's baiting the Pharisees, knowing that they would say absolutely not. Uh, and then he draws that comparison to a sheep that's fallen into a pit. Certainly you're going to raise the, the sheep out of the pit uh, and, and thus do work on the Sabbath. Uh, so how much more valuable is a human being than a, than a sheep? So he invites the, the man with the withered hand to hold his hand out and he um, heals him. I think what we see in this, uh, this pair of stories is really uh, 
remarkable, uh, wonderful. Uh, it, it's it's a story about um, it, it's about it's about the law and it's about grace. Um, it's about how do we understand our relationship with God in our um, protection of the Sabbath, and and how do we relate to each other in terms of our own relationships um, and. Um, how we conduct ourselves uh, in those relationships. Um, so if, if I anticipate um, a little bit later in Matthew's Gospel, I think Jesus addresses this uh, pretty fully uh, in Matthew 22. And I'm looking here at um, uh, verses 36 to 40. Um, but when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they came together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love the Lord your God. I mean, I'm sorry, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So, so here at the end of Matthew's Gospel in, in chapter 22, I think we see Jesus say rather succinctly what he says through these two episodes earlier in his ministry. Uh, first, he says uh, that, that, that he's the Lord of the Sabbath um, and, and that um, to, to, to experience um, hunger and satisfy that hunger to, um, does not violate the spirit of the Sabbath. Um, that the Sabbath is made for us, not us for the Sabbath. Uh, and secondly, he heals on the Sabbath. Uh, so in, in that first story, it, it, it talks a little bit about um, humans' relationship with God. Uh, and then in the healing, uh, it talks a little bit about our relationship with each other. Uh, so I think quite beautifully in those two uh, joined episodes, we see love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. That's the heart of the Sabbath, really and then love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, that's the second law. Uh, so I, I think it's really wonderful and um, a, a piece of Easter good news, perhaps, that we see uh, in this particular little episode out of Jesus' life, uh, a foreshadowing or an anticipation uh, of how Jesus will ultimately answer that lawyer who comes to him at the end of the gospel and wants to know, which, which is the greatest law? How do I obey the law? Well, it's, it's simple, Jesus says. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. If you can manage those two things, then, then all the rest of the law falls into place. Um, and ultimately, it's not a matter of law anyway. It's, it's a matter of grace, uh, knowing that um, even when we fail with regard to the law, uh, Jesus' grace allows us to succeed in maintaining our relationship with God through Him, uh, animated by the Holy Spirit. So that's, um, that's a glimpse of chapter 12. We'll continue on next week uh, with chapter 13. But in the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week. Uh, and, and again, I, I'd invite you to invite others to come and be a part of this, um, this Bible study if it's, um, if it's of value to you. Um, and... Um, in the meantime, why don't I close this with a prayer? Uh, this prayer that I'll offer is out of our prayer book. And as, and as I look out the window and I see the leaves um, beginning to, to come out on the trees and, and certainly the pollen falling um, and the seasons changing, um, I'll offer a prayer uh, out of the prayer book for the beauty of the earth. It's on page 840. Let us pray. We give you thanks, most gracious God, for the beauty of earth and sky and sea, for the richness of mountains, plains, and rivers, for the songs of birds and the loveliness of flowers. We praise you for these good gifts, and we pray that we may safeguard them for your posterity. Grant that we may continue to grow in your grateful enjoyment, in our grateful enjoyment of your abundant creation to the honor and glory of your name, now and forever. Amen. I hope you have a wonderful week.